Hello, welcome back to Truth Speak. My apologies, it's been many months since my last post. I keep saying I'll be better about that. I'm just gonna have to work on it, I suppose. Things have changed a little bit for me. Obviously, the hairdo is a little different, and I'm going about things a little differently, but the mission is still the same. And this is a continuation of Christianity and Feminism Part 2 or 3 at this point. Um, let's run right into it. It's important to note that all of the stuff that I bring up here, obviously, is for Christianity and for Christians, according to the King James Version. So if you're not a Christian, then this isn't something that affects you. Um, and also, people trying to force Christian will onto you is something that should not happen. But this is for you. Maybe you're curious whether you're a Christian or not. This is just something that you can take a look at and try to understand some things for yourself. Um, so allow me to dispel a myth. The Bible never advocates for somebody to remain unlearned. So you can throw out the assumption that women need to stay at home, not go to school, things like that, which I am sure exists in some different cultures or some sects of Christianity. However, it does not ever ed uh, advocate for an unlearned woman. As a matter of fact, in Joshua chapter 1, uh, John chapter 1, Psalms chapter 1, 1 Timothy, it talks about giving attendance to reading, meditating in the words of God, and asking for wisdom concerning it. These are all things that he wants you to do if you want to grow in your relationship with him. And it is your relationship with him, so ultimately you need to take the time to really understand who it is that you are worshiping, who it is that you have this relationship with. And honestly, there's a, there's a couple more verses you could use for this. And Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, would one thing that you keep seeing me reference. For my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Part of the reason why it's important for you to read and for you to learn is so that other people can't come and guide you down the wrong path or somehow manipulate you to misunderstand what it actually means because if you can't read it for yourself then you're basically at the mercy of whoever's trying to explain it to you and this becomes apparent actually in uh let's see i think it's acts chapter 18 remember as i give you verses just read the whole chapter and i paraphrase a bit on purpose because i want you to read the whole chapter and, and get used to researching these things for yourself but anyway acts chapter 18 there is Aquila and Priscilla, if I'm not mistaken. They actually pulled aside a man that was teaching in the synagogue and expounded the word of God to him more perfectly because they heard that what he was saying and he was bold and fearless with it, but he needed to change some things. He needed to be convinced about those things. But they took him aside, actually. They didn't speak up in the church. Which is actually the next stage that I want to go to because this is one of the heavier verses where a lot of people begin to build this hierarchy or this sense of difference is there is 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 34 and a couple other verses where it says, let the women be silent in the churches. And of course, you know, here in Western culture here today, many would take serious offense with that. And it's understandable, but yet again, I say to you that this is Christians for Christians, and this is for the way that Christ decided to have the roles in the church. As a matter of fact, it references that because it says, as it is written in the law. And that references all the way back to Genesis where Adam and Eve, and he said that the man shall rule over you. And in essence, between that one and the other chapter, I think in First Peter or Romans, Chad 16 verse 6 perhaps one of those two there are many uh, Romans chapter 16 if I'm not mistaken is a chapter where he's giving a lot of praise to the women that are in the churches for the work that they do however it consistently does keep up the thing that men should be the leaders in the church that's what Christ wants that's what he wants does that mean that you are less than no it's just difference of roles because when you look at the way that the Bible describes women, it, it describes them as prophets, uh, prophetesses. They, you know, they can prophesy. 
they are also ministering to people, you know, helping them along the way, guiding them as the verse that I just gave you. So it's not that they're limited in their functions per se, except when it comes to having leadership authority over the men, which is something he does not want to happen in the church. And it specifically repeats in the churches the multiple times that it says this. And it says if you have a question, you know, go home and ask of your husband or ask of the man of faith that's available. And that, I'm sure, is a part of iron right there. And then there's also a small, contro uh, small controversy. There's actually some controversy over rape. And apparently <laughs> some people have been trying to say that the Bible somehow justifies the rape and things like that. I want to throw a wrench into that as well because as I've already told you the other verses, there is another one, I think it goes back to Colossians, and it says, do not defraud one another except for a time, by consent, giving time to prayer and supplication. Now don't quote me on that, I'm sorry, I wish I remembered it, but at any, at any rate, there is a verse specifically that says, do not defraud one another. Now, when it's talking about defraud one another, it's talking to both parties. Sex is something that both parties should enjoy. It's not built for one person to enjoy or the other person to enjoy. It's built for both of you to enjoy. And both of you should keep each other's interests in mind. And so it's, it's terrible to think that anyone could misconstrue that as a possibility to somehow rape someone else, which involves all of the things, the elements that the Bible expressly preaches against. Because even in the Old Testament, rape is something that a man could be stoned for. Now, there are instances where they took captives from neighboring nations, and we can get into history there. But it's up to you what position you would like to take on that. But it doesn't seem that there is ever a verse explicitly condoning rape of any kind. And as a matter of fact, the, the penalty would be death. There is also, to, when you look at the subject of rape, rape comes from a lack of self-control, which is something that you should always have as a Christian. Because your interests, if you're truly a Christian, your interests aren't dedicated to the things that are in the world. You're dedicated to interests that are outside of this world. You're dedicated to giving him your prayer and supplication, giving him your time and your love, as well as your family, but first him. And with that mindset, you cannot possibly come to a conclusion that you could deprive your wife of, of the love that she needs, for vice versa, the wife, the love that her man needs, or dare to believe that you can just take it from her when you so desire, because those are both incorrect. And it's just something that I, I, I cannot drive hard enough but it's, it's obviously a misunderstanding that's built to benefit human nature. Because as I read it, you know, some pastors apparently were suggesting it or whatnot. I don't know how accurate that is, and I don't care. What I do care about is what is written there and what it says. And it says, don't defraud one another. It also says, commit yourselves one to another. It also says, love one another. And that's not something that people who love each other do. It is not. So if the husband's horny and the wife's not, or the wife's horny and the husband's not, then give time to pray. Just go into prayer and supplication because that's what you should be doing. Anyway, there is no justification for you now turning that attention into, into rape. But it does warn you that the more that you defraud each other, you are giving room to temptation. Because as you begin to deprive him or you deprive her of what they need, from this relationship, uh, that opens the door for them to be looking elsewhere to get it. Or for other people who were looking to interrupt your situation, now they have a way in that they may not have had before had you two been of the same mind and of the same goals. So that's part two. Now, as far as how far people have misconstrued it, and the main the main thing I know that pops up for a lot of people is why won't he let the women speak in the churches? If that's, if that's true, that men and women are neither different or anything else. As a matter of fact, Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 
says something specific about that. It says there's neither Jew nor Gentile, neither bond nor free, neither um, male nor female, but ye are all one in Christ. And so how can it say that on one side, you, you're saying, and then on the other say that, hey, women keep silence in the churches. There's a lot of historians that say this was towards the organization of the church. And in keeping in line with all of the scripture in which he said the men would rule over the woman, it also in another verse says, has respect unto her as the weaker vessel. And that goes back to the body mass thing I think we've talked about already, where the main differences between men and women is obviously women can give birth, but they on average have 30% less body mass or muscle mass than men do. And it's just the one difference that exists between us, it keeps, we have different roles is basically all there is to it. We were born to perform two different things. And he's reinforcing that by his structure of the church, is what it looks like to be. Now, if you don't choose to agree with that, that's up to you. However, it does not allow in any form or capacity to keep women somehow um, unlearned and somehow unable to do anything in the church because, as I said again, there's a specific areas where Peter actually, Peter actually gives praise to the women for their help and for their ministry in the church and helping people to come to the truth. In fact, the first convert from Asia was a woman, I think it says in there. So understand that this is not meant to keep you down in any way, shape, or form, but taking it that way, I then ask you to question your motives. I then ask you to question how you feel about it. Not because I'm coming at you or anything like that, but keep in mind, this isn't about me or you. This is the Word of God from the King James Version. As he wrote and expressly created this religion, this is what he wants. If you have that disagreement, take it up with him. But for it to devolve into the infighting that it has become is completely unnecessary. But more on this topic later. Thank you guys for listening. Have a good one.